I'll repeat. I welcome you with all my heart. I love you all. Most of you are closer to me than my own family ever was. But I wanted to talk to you today about the mind and what is spirituality. What is spirituality? What are the common belief systems in spirituality, if any? Is believing in demons or angels or gods spiritual? Is it only a new age thing? Does it have its roots in African religion and folklore? I know that some of you believe in the occult, unseen and unseeable entities that can take possession of your mind or your soul and destroy you. There's whole sub-religions built around the idea of a malevolent universe out there where every one of your actions and desires and loves can be acquired, tainted by, or used by invisible beings. And you worry about this. Some of you feel at times you've been taken possession of by an entity. Some of you fear being feasted on by a psychic vampire. If the world wasn't scary enough, you have to live in a world of hidden demons and entities that attach to your energy fields and either enhance them or suck them dry. And how do we find out about such things? We read about them on Facebook, especially Facebook, or the more general intellect, internet. We read about de demons and angels. We read about alternative worlds. traveling through astral dimensions to other worlds or different realities. What I've got to say is mind makes everything. Mind makes absolutely everything. We tend to live together in our world because we share a lot of concepts, a lot of roles and behaviors, ways to be. It's a shared reality. A socially shared reality. 
with common objects like automobiles, chairs, televisions, trees, shrubs, grass, rent, taxes, politics. And most of us, at one time or another, think that this is unreal. There must be more to the world than what we see, hear, feel, and touch. And there is. But mind makes everything. Mind makes us believe in electrons, protons, atomic particles, radiation, radioactive decay, the transmission of elements from one element to another through atomic reactions like fusion or fission. But we've never seen an atom. We've never seen an electron. It's all theory, and it seems to work. We get atomic electricity, nuclear reactor, submarines, and military ships that can travel hundreds of thousands of miles without refueling. So some of these theories seem to work in the sense that they bring something new into our world, like nuclear energy, electricity. But there are other beliefs that people carry, which are purely negative, like we're witnessing now with Trump. Trump, with his blaming foreigners, for everything evil in America, and that we have to build a wall to keep the human trash out. The biggest crisis of our times are Mexicans or Hondurans pouring over our borders, robbing us white Americans of our jobs and our prestige. So powerful is the spell that Trump casts that even the most disastrous week in his presidency with a failed world summit with Korea. Cohen testifying that the president was a crook and a liar. Many new investigations starting into the criminal proceedings of the crime family of Trump. Yet, his popularity rating, his approval rating, is still at 46%. How can that be? Mind makes everything. Mind takes hold of the beliefs it wants to believe in and reinforces them. So you continue to believe in them until it's manifestly impossible to believe in them. I've seen ghosts. At least I thought I've seen ghosts. Once in a while, when I was really into seeing whether there were entities, I thought I witnessed entities, especially when I was around Dia, who claimed to see all kinds of entities and be attacked by them. Those kinds of belief systems are catchy. 
if you're around a person who believes strongly enough and is convincing enough, soon you'll be seeing entities yourself, or at least fearing them and wanting to do kinds of ceremonies and rituals to protect yourself from them. But mind makes everything. Even the world that appears so real to us, the common world. When you realize that the mind makes it, you realize that what you're looking at is a kind of a solid dream. Words do not describe it. They create it. But when we come to things like entities, some people fear them. Some people want to see them. I remember Rajiv was telling me that when Dia was with him, she was seeing entities and demons all the time. Now, Rajiv said, He had spent years working with demons and entities as part of his spiritual training. He says things can become so real that they're as real as anybody else in the world right next to you. Like almost like being in the flesh. And you can maintain this world only because you believe in it. And you keep holding on to it by playing with it all the time, raising demons, raising entities. But he said it was a full-time job. After a while, you're not living in this world at all, but in an imaginary world of demons and entities. And it's not that it's imaginal, because for you, it's quite real. There are demons. There are angels because your mind makes it so. You may be actually able to see them, but others won't, or maybe they will because they'll be so convinced by your description. The point is though, so what? So what? It's like living in this world, this consensual world that everybody else lives in, which I call the mundane world. And you can lead, leave the mundane world and join the world of God. the levels of reality that you experience going into spirituality are first the level of the mind. Then underneath that, that comes out almost unexpectedly is the layer of emotions and feelings and feeling reactions. Below that or on the same level, is feeling the kinesthetic sensations of our body, the muscles when we move, the inside of our bodies with the organs, sometimes they hurt, sometimes they don't. Sitting still and feeling the breath going in and out, the diaphragm moving up and down. Here we're out of uh, the normal human world, the mundane world. And we're going in, into and exploring our inner worlds. The first level is mind, ideas, concepts, stories. And one set of stories involves entities, demons, angels, 
etc. It's a sub story. That's not really part of the consensual reality of most people, but it is for some who are superstitious or live in different parts of the world where these kinds of religions have taken root. And they bow, bow to invisible gods, the spirits of trees, the spirits of the forest. And they become warlocks, become witches, they become sorcerers. And they make changes and they do rituals. And to a degree they work. The mind can make anything happen. But eventually, no matter how wondrous these worlds are that are created or awful, we're always brought back to the mundane world. And why is that? Because the mundane world is not just a bunch of thoughts. It has a living presence that forms the way we see, feel, touch, behave, love, and die. It's the Procrustean bed of our country, our civilization. The generalized words, terms, mores, assumptions, guides that we live by and consider norms and consider truth, consider real, consider rules to live by. But if you had a caveman from 25,000 BC dropped into New York City. At first he wouldn't know what's going on at all. The things he see would not have the form that they have for us because we know what an airplane looks like and what it does. We know what a thousand feet, foot building looks like and that it's hollow and has people in is man-made and stands up over a period of time. But imagine a man from 25,000 years ago being at the base of one and seeing people disappear into them or appear from them. What does he imagine is inside if he does that at all? If he sees an airplane up close, it doesn't make any sense to him. He doesn't see like we do a cylinder with wings to support him engines to pull him through the air to give the lift. All this he doesn't understand. It would just be a blobulous thing. Or perhaps he gives it the form of some giant bird. I don't know. But when experiences happen to us outside of the mundane, don't we reach around and look for some sort of Explanation, that's the nature of the brain, looking for explanations. And what better explanation than one about entities, demons, angels, fights between them. Now, Rajesh's way of dealing with it, after having spent 12 years living in the astral areas and dimensions. When Dia brought it up, is to say to her, Dia, there's no entities here. There's no demons here. They don't exist. What he was trying to do was destroy her belief in entities and come back to the, his world, his shared world, his common reality world that most other people live in, the, the mundane world. 
where they can do spiritual practices to get out of the mundane world and escape it. But if you live in the world of entities, demons, and angels, you're two worlds away from being released from the world. You have to release yourself from the demonology, the Bernard Guntherisms, the idea of entities, dismissing them or inviting them or trying to see them or let your emotions attract them to you and latch on to you and control your behaviors. Then after you can leave that world and you come back into the ordinary world, the shit world around us that I call the mundane world, then you have to do the real work of both understanding the mind and getting deeper in the mind by getting into your heart, falling in love, going into complete devotion. And then you move the next dimension downwards in yourself to the world of Shakti. And then once you're in the world of Shakti, the ever-flowing energies, the ever-changing energies, you get to the place where you're certain about nothing because you realize nothing is the way it appears. The appearances are not real. They're not stable. Shakti makes everything change every second. You get to the point where there's nothing you can say about Shakti. There's nothing you can say about the world. And finally, when you wore Shakti out, you've had your enlightenment experience of meeting God within yourself, being loved by God within yourself, loving God within yourself, feeling the life force every moment of the day, and listen to the Shakti, which is the voice of the life force, and learning how to understand what the life force is telling you. Not like a language, but by an intuition, a showing. And the lowest level, when you get through the level of Shakti, is the emptiness, the nothingness, the bare awareness, basic consciousness without any objects, the twilight state between sleep and being awake. Everything else is rested upon this twilight sentience state of feeling, grasping, cognitively being aware of. So we have many levels of worlds. We have the mundane world at the top, just beneath that, the world of emotions. And beneath that, just the, the world experience our body creates by its own sensations and movements. And below that, the world of Shakti and of self-realization, of God-realization, realization, realization of the life force and how you are the life force embodied in a particular body and as such a singular instantiation of God's presence. God acts through you and you surrender to him or her 
become a vessel of God realization. And after a while, even this leaves you behind. But you're fully aware of the life force as yourself. And you sink into silence, losing even that awareness into growing complete peace where everything is nothing and nothing is everything. Now, the world of demons and entities really isn't a spiritual world. It's an interpretation laid on top of the mundane world. It's a subset. It explains certain kinds of experiences that you normally don't pay any attention to unless by training your attention is brought to them and given interpretations and names and exercises by which to build your attention to the substreams within the manifest mundane world. Here there are demons, angels, and they seem so real. I remember one time years and years ago, when I first met Dia, uh, I had been in satsang for two or three years, and I wasn't the friendliest of all spiritual teachers. I got a lot of people that were angry with me because I was pretty blunt. And so many warned Dia not to come around me, that I was evil, I would use her, et cetera, et cetera. I heard that from so many people, not about Dia, but about themselves. They've been told that by people. Such that when I saw her, after a certain point, when she, we went to uh, uh, Self-Realization Lake, Lake in Palisades Park, in Palisades, specific Palisades. And as we are walking along, I see Dia getting progressively more worried about me. And when she looked at me, she had a furrowed brow and she started walking ahead faster and faster. And she'd turn around, stop and turn around and see if I was coming. And I continued walking towards her. And the park is around in a circle. And she got further and further ahead and more and more frightened. And then went into the little chapel and I went in the chapel too. She was there looking at the self-realization founders up front. And gradually she relaxed and came back and sat with me. For the longest time, what had happened, I didn't know until a couple of years later, she came back and said, so many people had poisoned her with stuff about me and the harm I could do. That when she saw me, for her, I became transformed into an enormous black spider. I was going to devour her. And she was running from that horrible black spider until she found the chapel and went inside and went up front were pictures of the gurus of the lineage and of Christ and others were there. One of the odd things is, she said, 
what she had to do was to have sex with each of them in order to propitiate the evil and get rid of the evil inside of me. And I was no longer a spider. Now, this is the kind of world that a lot of people live in. A world of entities. A world of evil energies. A world of dark magic. Of white magic. I know that Swami Chaitanananda actually took courses in black magic and performed black magic while in India. He also warned of demons and how to deal with demons if you know you're being pursued by demons. But everything is made in the mind. If in your mind, you don't believe in demons. They will not be a factor for you. But if you believe in demons, you believe in entities, you believe in angels and a fight between good and evil, it will be very, very real for you. You will feel these energies. You will feel like you're possessed. because mind makes everything. So the same advice that Rajiv gave Dia is just stop believing they exist. You don't hold the hope open that they exist by saying, Ed or Rajiv, you don't know. You don't know whether they exist or not. You just because you don't see them, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Just like electrons, you don't see them, but they exist. But do they? We only believe electrons exist because they're a good explanation why the light goes on when we throw a switch. It's a convenient fiction. If you believe in the nuclear energies within the core particle of an atom, the strong energy, the weak energy, electromagnetic energy, you'll learn about fission, you learn about fusion and the release of energy through various atomic processes. And this allows you to create an atom bomb and an H bomb. So is it true? All these interpretations about how atoms interact and so forth. Well, let me tell you, the particle physics that created the atom bomb in 1945 are not the particle physics of today. The world of the particle physics and quantum mechanics of 50 or 60 years ago is not the world of science today. It's very different. So we can say it was truth back then, but now it's not truth. It's just a theory whose time has passed. If we believe in Jesus, that he can cast out demons, and we want to be able to do that. We have to believe that there are de demons to be cast out. A lot of times people who are not too well put together emotionally and intellectually will feel stuff going on inside of themselves and worry about it being an entity or a possession going on. I know I did. Many years ago, when I was first starting spiritual practices and was going through a lot of different changes and inner meditation experiences that affected my body, like feeling the electromagnetic shell of the earth, feeling the magnetism in the air, 
being able to feel the electricity and the wires in the wall. I came to see the full moon as like a demon whose light could destroy me. So I had to keep out of the light of the full moon. So I had a lot of fantasies. It's because my meditation was creating a lot of different states of mind, of existence, of sensit increased sensitivity that most people in the mundane world had no idea about. So the mundane world was no longer suited to my experiences. So I may have thought at the times that I was possessed by demons because I had no other explanation for it or not. I might have just let myself watch the feelings and the changes without giving it an interpretation of a demon or an entity. So a lot depends on how free you are from your mind. If you're not free from your mind, you keep giving interpretations from your theories and belief systems to cover unusual experiences that you're having. And you use these convenient fic fictions to explain what experiences you're going through, even though in no way in the world can they be true or permanent. Now, this is an incredibly complex subject because we're talking about real existence versus fake existence and the difference between the world of entities, the common world of the mundane, where we all share a mundane life, and then spiritual enlightenment, where we can get away from the mind finally and begin to deal with others in the world, not from a position of mind, but from a position free from mentality, from politi political correctness, common morality, common ethics, common, common ideas of what should be done and not should be done, and instead face what's actually going on in ourselves without ideas about entities, demons, or even levels of being like I talk about and Nisargadatta talked about. Getting away from the mind, getting away from its dominance is unbelievably difficult. I don't care how many enlightenment experiences you've had, how long you've dwelt in emptiness, no matter how many Ken shows you've had, seeing that the world is a creation of your mind, the mind always comes back because that is its habit and its strength. The mind comes back the common interpretations of the base of your life. The only thing is that after enlightenment, you realize this world has very little to do with you, if, uh, if anything at all. You're the sentience of the world. You are that which fees, feels the world, that sees the world that bows to the world, that honors the world. You're part of it, but not really of it. The mundane world is not you. It's the prevailing concepts about the world and the, your manifestation of reality. The interpretations it gives every one of your experiences how to do interpersonal relationships, how you're supposed to do them, all the shoulds and oughts, 
create the matrix as surely as the matrix was created by the machines in the matrix movie. Just as surely we create a matrix of the mundane world. And one sub matrix of the mundane world is the matrix of spiritual energies, of entities, of ghosts, of alternate dimensions. of demons and angels and fights between heaven and hell, good and evil. It's not deeper than the common belief system. It's just that it takes sensations that meditators feel of intensities within or energies within and turns them into entities rather than just being aware of them and not giving them any interpretation. But if you believe in entities enough, you study entities enough, you read books about them, how to raise them, how to capture them or break capture or buy them, pretty soon you'll be, you'll be noting more and more phenomena that support your belief in entities and you'll begin to see them. Mind creates the world. Mind is everything. And although nobody else can see them, it's not in their common reality. If you talk to them enough, if you're important enough to them, if the way they feel around you, they feel really great because of your energy or whatever, after a while, they'll also begin to feel entities. But that doesn't mean that they're there for anybody else in the world except believers in them who accept the truth of their beingness. I know this is gonna be so hard for some of you to believe because you're saying that's you don't know, you've never experienced them, but so many people have. But I can tell you so many more people haven't than those who have. If more people experience these things, they'd be on television, not as movies with stories, but there'd be talks about the entity worlds and how they affect everyday life. You would see it everywhere on news shows, on talk shows, there would be whole schools devoted to dealing with entities, whole universities, and not in just their public lecture form, but as courses, courses in magic and demonology. And I guess there are in certain parts of the world or there have been in the past, but it, we're never talking about more than 2% of the human race. It's a belief system. The mind makes everything. Believe it and you'll experience it. And can even share that experience with another believer. But it is not real. That whole world of demons, the whole world of entities is not real. Just as I tell you over and over again, the mundane world is not real. There are levels and depths so much deeper than the mundane world or even than the emotional world. There's the world of devotion and love, which transforms into experience of continuous bliss and shakti, constant orgasms which are not sexual in nature, but are spiritual in nature, which gradually transform your body and your mind into purity.
No entity can touch a pure soul. Just like the mundane world cannot touch a pure soul. This is another area where I could go much, much deeper. But I won't hear, I'll leave it to my writings as it comes to me. Today was more of a larger overview of mundane in the world of magic. Now I'm saying there's real magic that can be done. Once you understand the mind makes everything, you can use words, you can use the flow of your voice, the sound of your voice, the timbre, and you can talk poetry, or you can talk about things in a mundane way, but in a very elevated, elevated way, with lots of bliss and shakti, and you can move the world. You can become a harbinger of the future brightening of mankind. It's all about how well you can manipulate your own life force, your own mind, and give that to other people directly by your presence, by your words by the content of your words. This is not involving any entities whatsoever. It's becoming a magician directly yourself, where you can heal, not by inviting entities to heal for you, but do it directly out of your own power of manipulating Shakti and love and devotion and surrender where you walk around as a humble person, surrendered to life, living from day to day without desire. And when something needs to happen to help people, you're there because you don't care about much else. You're willing to forego lunch in order to help somebody with their car or whatever. or more seriously and deeply, help a person with their life, help them get over an addiction. Just love them perhaps, love them so strongly that they can feel it like they've never felt it before. And your interaction with them has changed them because finally for the first time in their life, they feel somebody important to them, like a mother or a father has loved them deeply and seen them and loved them anyway. And that fixes so many things in so many people just by itself. Being held by another, worshipped by another, loved by another in such a deep way that it touches us and heals us very deeply. Are there any questions? It's Michael T. Hi. Can you hear me? No. I cannot <laughs> hear you. Can you hear me now? No, I still can't hear. I'm just kidding. Ah. Um, I got a, um, it just surprises me that I, I, just my nickel and dime here on the stuff with demons and ghosts, it just seems to me that you can waste so much time with that. A person could waste so much time with that because it's sort of like a side path. And instead of taking time to cultivate what you should really be doing, you're just wasting your time in a world that's just, uh, just a waste of time. It's tough as it is to cultivate correct spirit.